So we verified all the requirements, and you know what that means. Now it's time to actually run the test. Now you might be noticing that we only have about a half a page to work in, and you might be thinking that's not enough space. Oh, but it is, because we're in Chapter 11 now, so things are a little bit different. All right, so we're going to um, perform a hypothesis test to determine whether the caffeine therapy was effective in lowering the supplemental oxygen rate for premature infants at a 0.01 level of significance using the p-value method. All right, now this is going to be critical. We're going to have to figure out which direction we're going in here for our hypotheses. It's tempting to think, oh, it has the word lower in it, so that'll definitely mean it's lower, and is in this case, but it, the reason isn't because of the word lower. So let me see if I can explain. So the way hypotheses in this chapter work is it's always just that the proportion for group 1 or the mean for group 1 is equal to the mean for group 2. Right? So you say, look, I have P1 here, and I always assume equals, always, and P2. Okay, so now I have to think about which direction I want to go. And so what it's talking about up here is, was the caffeine therapy, that's group 1, effective in lowering the supplemental oxygen rate? So in other words, is group 1 lower than group 2? So by that word lowering, that means that we're going to be going this way. And it's not just the word lowering. It's also the fact that group 1 is in the front. right? The caffeine group, this is the caffeine group. The caffeine group is lower, right? than the placebo group. This part you don't actually <laughs> write generally, but I'm writing it here just so we all understand. Now, I have to tell you that there's another way to write these, and I want to make sure everybody understands it because we're going to need it for later. <laughs> so we have H0 here, and I could write H0 a different way. This is the way our textbook writes it, right? so that the group 1 is equal to group 2. But I want to remind you from algebra class that we learned that you could subtract. So you can say, look, I can subtract P2 from both sides, and that would get me P1 minus, because I'm going to subtract, P2, and that will be equal to, okay, well, if the two groups were equal, when I subtract, I would end up with 0. Right? If I subtract P2 from both sides, I'll end up with 0 over here. If they were equal to each other, when I subtract them, I will get nothing. Both of these are very useful ways to think about this, and we're going to use both of them. So just keep that in mind. All right, so P1 equals P2, or P1 minus P2 is equal to 0, same thing. Right? This and this are the same. And then the alternative would be H1. It'll be P1 minus P2 because we're going to subtract again, is less than 0. Right? So we're going to have, we're subtracting P2 from both sides, and we would end up with P1 minus P2 over here is less than, lower than, 0. These are the same statement, and we will use both of them. We're going to use the one on the left more often, so this is the one we're going to use more often, but the other one is also valid. So I want you to realize that they're both available to us. OK, so that was a little bit of work. But step two is alpha. And alpha is the probability of a type 1 error, which is right here. Done. Step three. I'm going to put it right over here. Now, this is where it took us a long time in chapter 10. But here, it's this huge, ugly formula, but we're not going to write it. We're just going to use StatCrunch. StatCrunch will get us the values we need. All right, so we're going to need StatCrunch. So Z0 will come out of StatCrunch. And for the record, for step four, I'm going to draw my little normal curve. And StatCrunch will give us that also. So steps three and four we want to get from StatCrunch. Now, where do we go? Well, StatCrunch instructions are right here at the top. It tells us to go to stat, proportion stat, two sample, with summary. 
So let me grab StatCrunch. Stat, proportion stat, two sample because we're in chapter 11 with summary. And then we tell it the numbers, right? So for group one, we had X1 was 350, N1 was 963, right? Because that always goes X and then N, just like in chapters 9 and 10. And this was 447, and this was 954. Right, we already wrote those problem, those numbers on the previous page. And then look right here. See, StatCrunch is using that alternative way of writing the hypotheses, where they're subtracting. So P1 P minus P2 equals, it will always be zero for us in this course. And we're going to change this to a less than, because we had a less than problem. And then just like in chapter 10, you want to make sure you turn on your p-value plot, because that'll make it so that part four is done for you and then we sit compute. And honestly, I mean, the values are here, but you can also see the picture. The picture has everything you need because it shows you the graph and look at how far our z-stat is. It's way far over to the left. It's negative 4.6686. So that's step three right there. And then step four is the p-value in the picture. So let me draw those. Okay. Okay, so I've got my curve right here. Here's part four. I realized I was working with pen and I wanted to work with marker here. So this Z value is negative 4.6686. It's really far over to the left. The P value is so small that StatCrunch won't even give it to us. It just tells us that it's less than 0 0.0001. All right, so now part five, we have to make a decision. And just as in previous chapters, we reject HO when our p-value is low, right? So we'll reject the null hypothesis if our p-value is really low, lower than our alpha. And our alpha is 0 0.01, and whatever this p-value is, it's definitely lower than that, right? <laughs> because, um, so we are going to reject HO for sure, because our p-value, which is less than 0 0.0001, is less than our alpha, which was 0 0.01. We don't know what this number is, but we know it has a ton of zeros in it. And a ton of zeros is less than just one zero. So now we're on to step six, writing the conclusion. And the thing to remember is that a lot of times the conclusion is partially written for you somewhere in the problem. So you start off with the script, right? We're rejecting HO, so there is sufficient evidence. to support the claim. And then you kind of want to look up in the problem for where I, I wrote stuff that are things like it's greater, it's not equal to, it's changed, it's you know less than. And sure enough, right here, the caffeine therapy was effective in lowering supplemental oxygen rate. That's it. You just write that. That the caffeine therapy It's often wherever the direction word is, that will be the claim. So that the caffeine therapy was effective in lowering the supplemental oxygen rate for premature infants, because this, of course, was just talking about premature infants. It's not about any other groups.